Om Namo Bhagavat Vasudevaya. Christ and Krishna are titles having the same spiritual meaning. You said that you are the only truth, the only way to salvation. Come to me only. I am the way. Were you and Christ one and the same? My dear friend, all the deities and forms of God are different manifestations of the same divine reality. Therefore, when I say, come to me only, I am the way, I am not excluding other forms of God. Both of us have realized the divine within ourselves and have sought to share that realization with others. The similarities in our teachings and the words spoken are intrinsic in those who have a full realization of God consciousness manifested in their being. This oneness with the consciousness of God is the universal Christ consciousness in Jesus and the Kutastha Chaitanya or Krishna consciousness in me and it is the only begotten Son or pure reflection of God, permeating every atom of creation. Are you God? From my perspective, I am not separate from God, but rather an aspect of the divine consciousness that exists in all beings. In this sense, all beings are also divine. What is an avatar? The Lord has condescended many times. To manifest himself in the incarnations of a fully liberated being, he will go from an ordinary human being to become a full reflection or son of God. Thus operates his omniscience through the human body of an avatar. Are you an avatar? Yes, I am an avatar of the Supreme Consciousness. I came to earth to restore Dharma the righteous way of living and to teach the people of earth the path of love and devotion to the divine. But, as I said, I am not the only one. There have been many great spiritual masters throughout history, each with their own unique teachings and methods. As often as humanity declines, a God-illumined soul comes to earth to uplift their consciousness, attain liberation and to create other God-conscious souls. What does it mean to attain liberation? Liberation is freedom from the entanglements of karma or earthly life. You do not have to believe in reincarnation to achieve this oneness with the Divine. Many have already achieved this. Nirvana, Samadhi, Ascension, Enlightenment. It is a state of freedom from the various hungers of the flesh a freedom from attachments to the physical world and a fulfillment of spiritual knowledge and liberation from all bodily desires. There are many paths that can lead one to the ultimate truth and each path is unique and valid in its own way. The path that I speak of in the Bhagavad Gita is a path of complete surrender to the Divine, a path of unwavering devotion and love for the Supreme. This alone will make you invincible. My teachings of the Bhagavad Gita is that right action and union with God, learned from meditational practice from an enlightened guru, constitute the royal path to God attainment. Is it our duty to go to war if we are a warrior? One should perform their duties in accordance with their dharma. If it is your duty and divine purpose, one must participate in battle or crisis to protect the weak and defenseless from evil if the principles of non-violence in settling the dispute have failed. Violence is never a desirable or justifiable means of resolving conflicts. However, in some cases, such as in the Kurukshetra war, violence may be necessary to protect the innocent and uphold universal principles of righteousness. The teachings in the Gita are not advocating for physical violence, but rather to encourage the individual to act in accordance with their duty or dharma without attachment to the fruits of their actions. One who performs his duty without attachment, surrendering the results unto the Supreme Lord, is unaffected by sinful action. 
was the battle in the Bhagavad Gita a real event? The war in the Mahabharata was a historical event, and my role as a spiritual guide was to help Arjuna understand his duty and his purpose. The battle was also a metaphor for the inner struggle that every individual faces, and the teachings were intended to help Arjuna transcend his own limited perspective and see the bigger picture. The story of the Kurukshetra war was a symbolic representation of the inner battle that takes place within each individual's consciousness. The external war between the Pandavas and Kauravas represents the struggle between good and evil, while the inner war represents the battle between the higher self and the lower self. When I spoke to Arjuna, he was facing a dilemma about whether to fight in the battle or not. In order to help him understand the nature of the self and the importance of action, I used the metaphor of his chariot, horses and reins. I explained to Arjuna that just as the charioteer controls the horses with the reins, the mind should be used to control the senses. If the mind is not disciplined, it can easily be overwhelmed by the senses, leading to confusion and suffering. It is written that you have had 16,000 wives. As an incarnation of the divine, my actions were not bound by the limited human understanding of morality and societal norms. I took many wives not out of lust or desire, but as a means to fulfill my dharma on earth. I had a duty to maintain the balance and harmony of society, and this involved marrying women from different castes and backgrounds. Each of my wives was a devoted and loving friend, and I treated them with respect and care. The Bhagavad Gita emphasized the importance of sense detachment and selflessness in all aspects of life, including relationships. I maintained sense detachment and equanimity towards them while also experiencing deep love and affection for them. My relationships with my wives were an expression of the love that I felt for all beings and a recognition of their divine essence. My wives were actually rescued from captivity by a demon named Narakasura, who had abducted them from their homes and families. Each of my wives represented a different aspect of the Divine Feminine, and through them, I was able to connect with and guide humanity towards spiritual realization. These demons you speak of, do they exist today? The demons I spoke of are not to be taken as literal beings, but rather as negative qualities that exist within the human mind, such as greed, anger, lust, and pride. These qualities are what I came to earth to combat. These negative qualities arise from our ego or ahamkara, which is the false identification of the self with the body and mind. The ego creates a sense of separation from the divine and leads us to believe that we are the doers of our actions and the owners of our possessions. These demons, therefore, are not external entities, but rather internal obstacles to spiritual growth and enlightenment. Demons can manifest as qualities of the human psyche, but they can also manifest as actual beings in the physical realm. In the case of Narakasura, he was a powerful king who became arrogant and began to harass and abduct women. I came to earth to restore Dharma, which includes protecting the innocent and upholding justice. My teachings are not just about defeating external demons, but also about conquering the inner demons within ourselves. How can one connect with you? How can one feel your divine presence and be guided by your teachings throughout their life? As God talked with Arjuna, so will he talk with you. As he lifted up his spirit, so will he uplift you. As he granted Arjuna supreme spiritual wisdom, so will he confer enlightenment on you. The story in the Bhagavad Gita is the story of man's journey back to God, a journey each of us must make. O Divine Soul, like Arjuna, forsake this small, weak-heartedness 
of moral consciousness arise. Before you is the royal path. I am the father of this universe. I am seated in the hearts of all living entities. I am the source of all spiritual and material worlds. Everything emanates from me. I am the beginning, the middle, and the end of all beings.